Hi, good morning. Welcome back to Mike Makes It. In front of you, there is a four inch AccuLock machine vise. Now I've bought this primarily to go on the old lathe I have here. You've seen this in previous videos. It's got a mill attachment on the top, but I don't have a really good vise uh, to make full use of it. So that's really why I've purchased this little vise now. So we'll get him out the box. And have a look, see how good or bad it is. It costs less than £60, so I'm not expecting it to be like super accurate. I don't work to microns, uh, more like half a mil would do me. There's a book of words. Got a handle, a few T slot nuts. We'll get the polystyrene off it, and there he is. That weighs 16 kilograms. That's very, very heavy but it hopefully it's not going to be too heavy. They do a six inch vise and that's a phenomenal weight and it's very, very big. So it's obviously too big for the, the lathe and mill, mill machine I have over there. So we'll get out the wrap and do a few little measurements, just see how accurate it is. Well, okay, there you go. Spin him around so you can have a little look. It's not a unibody vise in the sense um, the rear jaw and the base is one part. There's two parts, you can see there's a swage running through, block of metal. There's two, I don't know if you can properly see that yet. There's two, obviously two jaws, one jaw's bolted to this unit that doesn't move. This will move with the handle, of course. So um, yeah, we'll, well, I'm gonna strip it down a little bit further just to see how everything's made up and to give you an idea what you get for 60 pound. The edges feel very, very sharp, so I'm gonna probably deburr those, uh, just a tad. But first inspection, don't look too bad. The handle's removable, it didn't actually get fixed on here. You could probably use a spanner. It's probably very tight, oh, there we go. Didn't think I could do it with one hand. Let's take that off. Well, it's not, um, it's fairly smooth. Granted, I'm only using two fingers to open that. But yeah, right, I'll put the camera down. We'll get this stripped down a little bit further and uh, do a few measurements. Well, that's broken down as far as I really want to go with it. In fact, <laughs> there's, apart from taking the paint off, I couldn't go a lot further. But these are the two jaws. They're replaceable, of course, but I want to check those for squareness and, you know, make sure there's... How accurate, really, that's what I'm trying to say. You want to know how, how accurate they are. This is the backstop for the jaw that would go here. A little bit disappointed it's a casting. Would have been nice if it was solid, but nevertheless, um, I think we should be pretty good there. In here, you've got a couple of dowels, if you want to call them dowels. So the rear jaw base is effectively fixed to the body. It's not as good, as I said, as a unibody vice, but nevertheless, for £60, I'm not going to grumble that much. We've not got an Acme thread on it, which would be nice. That's traditionally what they use for good vices. It's, I'm not sure what um, thread that is, but it's just uh, a machined thread, if you like. I can't help you with any uh, details on that. Here, though, it's quite nice. It's got thrust washer, thrust, thrust bearing. So when you really are packing in the pounds on the vise to clamp your material, you're pushing against um, a thrust bearing. Could have just been a plain bearing, uh, a couple of washers, bit of grease, but no, they actually got a thrust bearing on there. Could upgrade that, put something a little bit better in there, but nevertheless, it is a thrust bearing, so not too bad. You get a little bit of wibble wobble in there. You poke that through. When it was assembled, there was a little bit of play I don't think I'm going to worry about that. That should be fine. One thing I do like on machine vices or any vice like this, uh, you get jaw lift. Now I can find a cheap vice. Well, let's see if we can whip over. Here we go. So we can give you a demo of jaw lift on this. Basically, when you close the jaws and you're clamping and you're clamping on the top, there's a tendency for this jaw to lift so the material in your vice will tend not to be square 
and obviously if you're drilling holes down in it you'd like to know they're square or 90 degrees to the work now they're not necessarily going to be because how they work there's just a plate there running on machine flats so there's no way on this earth are you going to hold that absolutely flat now what they've done on here and they do this on the real expensive vices as well i'm probably gonna to have to put the camera down to give you a better view so let me do that now right i'm going to call this the sledge it's probably not called that but that's what i'm calling it today that'll sit in the vise the lead screw will screw into this hole there and as you turn the lead screw this will be pushed forward when this is pushed forward it pushes this block of metal which has a jaw on it so basically all the force to move this is coming from this now you can see there's a tapered edge there that bites into the front part of the lower jaw base like that and in here we can dig it out there's half a ball bearing of steel made of steel there you go if you can see that and basically this edge here pushes on that bearing and because it's at an angle it's trying to push this across but also pulling it down and that'll mitigate some jaw lift and we'll just see how good it is when it's all put back together but yeah, for £60 to get this type of assembly, very, very good. Hopefully, it'll live up to uh, my expectations and these fl these surfaces are fairly flat and square. So what I'm going to do, I think, take some of the very sharp edges off here, get a little bit more grease in on it, and we'll take some measurements along here just to see how flat they are and uh, see how see how we're doing with this also now i've not got any special measuring equipment i got a vernier a micrometer and a bit of old granite so uh, we're not going to get super accurate results but nevertheless we're going to be able to measure fairly accurately how good or bad this is but just looking at it it gives you an idea of quality and to my mind yeah i'm happy with the money i spent but let's get the old measuring uh, kit out and see how good or bad it is Right, this is about the best setup I've got. Basically, it's an Aldi chopping board and a dial gauge. Uh, each division's 10 microns in there. I've set it to zero. I'm nearly at the edge, but I've run our chopping board. I can't get any further over. So we'll just see what we get. It's about 10, 15 microns, 20. 30 coming back now going the other way 10 20 25 10 20 yeah about 30 micro so it is cupped a little bit which um a bit of a shame but honestly um 30 microns i ain't gonna quip about that I'll check these out, and I well, might even be able to do it now. Just hold on. Well, let's try that. I'll move the jaw. I'll move this as opposed to the, the gauge. So. Well, I can't grumble at that. Barely getting a deflection. Let's try the other one.
Here we go. It's a little bit further, eh? That's by 15 microns, that end. Although, it don't help with things moving around. Like I say, I, I, I expect the real engineers are laughing at me here. But it just gives me an indication of how accurate this is, and it, it's not bad. Yeah, the, the, the measuring gear I got isn't really up to snuff. However, I think we managed to show that it ain't bad. It ain't bad for £60. So, like I said, a bit of grease on here, a bit of deburring. I'll put it back together. I'll show you the swivel base, which is just sitting over the side here. And we'll see how accurate that is, because that's going to be important as well. Um, probably more so than a little bit difference in the size of the jaws here. So long as they close parallel to one another, that's the main thing, and they look good. So... We'll fire up the base as well when this is all back together. And I want to see when we turn the vice round, as you can do, I don't want it doing this. So hopefully the base is going to be as good as the rest of this assembly. So we'll get this back together and uh, we'll have a look at the swivelly base. I thought before I reassemble it, I'll just show you the base as it is. You've got a machine surface here, two machine surfaces, pin in the middle for locating the vice couple of T-slot nuts that go round. We have got dimensions uh, in degrees, look like laser etched into um, the metal. You're not gonna be able to see those probably in a few months time, but they're there nevertheless. The base is machined well again, and there is the ability to fit some uh, locating lugs uh, to tie up with your mill. They're not supplied, but you have got slots and a couple of uh, holes already drilled in there. Uh, ready for, for you to use if you wish. Also on the base, there's a, a groove here, a channel, likewise on the other side. So if you are using liquid coolant in your lathe or the mill, it will channel the liquid away, hopefully, to your suds tray. Also, in the vice, you've got a similar channel. <clears throat> so if you are using coolant and it's overflowing, it should openly channel it back into the mill or the lathe so it can be recirculated rather than on your foot. So if we turn this over as well, I'm showing you the base on here. That's another well machined surface. Um, I've measured it, but if it's like the rest, I'll be more than happy for what Mike's got to do in the garage here. So I'm going to mount the two together, see how well it swivels. I've just noticed also on the vice base, you've got similar slots, uh, already threaded out holes as well, so you could put guides in there if you wish. Um, I think I mentioned, if I didn't, you can use the vice on its own or with a swivel base. That's the idea of me buying the two together. You can buy the vice with no base, but for it was minimal amount. I think it's less than a tenner. You got the, va uh, the, the base with it as well, so uh, I got two for one there. I'll put all the links in the description to the company I bought it from, all the measurements, all the spec for the vice. So, but now we'll get this back together and see how well it swivels. Right, we're all back together there on the swivelly base. Gonna move this over to the lathe just to see if it'll fit and um, you know, show you the finished position it's gonna be in. I was wrong here. They do supply two guides to go on the base of this machine. So uh, there's the second one. So yeah, they, they those come as extras. Didn't realise that. There's a bag of bits. Not that. Bag of bits come with it as well. So that's all right. What I wanted to try to show you with, was a jaw lift. Um, this is the vice I usually use in the drill press. Now if you look at the here, as I tighten up, I don't know if you can really see that but the jaw is lifting. This is tipping back. You see, just about see that. Do the same on 
the new machine. You just uh, pop the camera down a second. There we go. I'll put that right in the top and I'll move my arm out the way so we can focus. Pull back over here. Again, we're looking right down there. That's tightening up, loosening. You can see if it's starting to move the workpiece. I think that's, do you know, I, I can't actually see on the camera if that's lifting. I don't think it is. It has got that half ball bear in there. So um, I would imagine after a little bit of use, some extra pressure, release, pressure, release, etc., that bearing is um, going to bed in a little bit and the jaw lift's going to be minimal. But yeah, anyhow, let's get this vise over on the lathe. Oh, well, there you go. Apart from the colour, it's a good complement to. Uh... All right, there we go, sitting on the old cross slide there. Looking about the right size compared to the rest of the lathe. Now, the company I bought the vice from is called Viva. They got a .co.uk presence. I would imagine all the stuff is coming from China, but what a range they've got. You want to go and have a look. If you want something, they got it. Uh, literally, literally. Certainly from my point of view, mechanical, electrical stuff. Yeah, uh, there's loads of stuff. Um, I've already filled my Christmas list, so I've added now, maybe next year. But these, they do, um, I don't know if they do a two inch, but certainly a three, four, five, and six inch machine vise. And they're not that expensive. They're really not for what they got, for, for what they are. Uh, you can, there's your old mill head coming in. So I can take the vise off so I can get further under, but in the past, when I have used the mill, and it's absolute rare occasions, I've had to put a block here to actually lift up because the drop of this isn't that great. Uh, sorry, you can't see it. The drop of the, the head isn't that great. So I've had to put a machine block here where the, uh, the, where the vice is to actually lift the workpiece up. But I won't need to do that with that. If I took a swivel base off, yeah, there's two things. I gain more height uh, if that's what I need. Um, but I will lose the functionality of the swivel, which I think is going to be very handy. So uh, that is nice and smooth. I haven't measured it uh, for any play. I said I was. I haven't done that because I don't think I'm going to get it that accurate. Um, but if it's the machine base is anything like the rest of the vice, it's going to be within a fraction, and that fraction is good enough for Mike. But anyhow, that's the Vivo four-inch machine vise, um, hundred mil jaw opening, four-inch jaw opening, four-inch across this way. Five-inch is the same, apart five-inch by five-inch. You, you get the gist. I'll put all the links in the description to Vivo and the, the, this particular vise spec. Hopefully, you found the uh, the video useful. If you have, a uh, thumbs up would be great. Uh, I really do appreciate you um, watching the videos. It just gives me more incentive to go and make more. Anyhow, thanks for watching.